Hello and welcome to Production Bytes. I'm your host Nick and today I'm going to be covering ImageLine's Patcher. Patcher was introduced with FL Studio 10 and now in FL 11 has been pretty heavily updated. It was already a hugely powerful plugin but has been given a lot of features to smooth out your workflow and to help you create more friendly processing chains as well as some new functions in the form of VFX plugins. So because I haven't covered it before and I've received a lot of requests, it's time has come. For those who don't know, Patcher is a plugin host environment which can either be loaded in the channels list as an instrument or in the mixer as an effects insert, where you can load up any combination of FL native or VST plugins and route them however you like. At its simplest, you can create an entire effects chain for use on one mixer insert instead of using multiple inserts or multiple mixer tracks. At its most complex, you can create chains which you wouldn't normally be able to create inside the mixer. Reason users are used to a similar level of control in the form of racks, and reactor users will also find themselves well at home with the routing system. Patch's interface is split into two main tabs. Map is where you add plugins and set up routing between them, and the editors tab will take you to the interfaces of all the added plugins. Patcher version 2 also adds control surface, which is loaded with every new instance of Patcher, and adds a third tab. Control Surface allows you to set up your own user interface of knobs and sliders to control your patcher preset. Multiple control surfaces can also be added, and each new one adds a new tab to the interface. Also, you don't have to be limited by the default knob and slider designs in Control Surface, and can design your own using the included control creator, but we'll get onto that a bit later. In the Map tab, there are three types of routing connections. Audio, Parameters, and Events. Audio connections show where audio is being routed and have volume controls on to adjust the level between plugins. These are yellow connections. Parameter connections carry control information between plugins, usually from control surface and these appear red. If you have a knob which is able to control parameters elsewhere, this is what you'll use. And finally, events connections which carry MIDI information. You'll probably find you use these a lot of the time to carry MIDI information from outside of Patcher into Patcher to control virtual instruments. You can also show or hide each of these connections using the switches in the top right of the interface. Right-clicking gives a few options too. The first two are for adding plugins. View gives you control over what is shown inside the routing window. Auto-arrange modules does what it says on the tin. Remember tab sizes applies to the preset you're working on. If this is ticked when you save your patcher preset, then when you load up the preset later, the size of the patcher window will be remembered. If this is unticked, then the preset will conform to the default patcher size when loaded. And finally, link velocity. This applies FL's global velocity curve to the incoming MIDI, like you get with plugins in the main DAW, whereas with this option switched off, every incoming MIDI note is assumed to be at full velocity. The Editors tab simply stacks all the loaded plugins one on top of the other. You may need to resize the window to fit some plugins in, but you can also minimize plugins, and there are sliders available to move around the interfaces. That's the basics of the interface then, so now let's go ahead and start building a chain using all the different connection types. Firstly, I'm going to put in a harmless, and as you can see this takes an events input from FL and outputs audio to FL. This new version of Patch is very cool in that when something is actually going through a connection, it starts moving to tell you. Next, I'm going to put in a Tau Dub 2. This is a free plugin, which is a delay plugin. I quite like it for delay. As you can see right now, it's hooked up an events connection to Tau, and I don't want this, so I'm just going to drag this off. As what I want is for Harmless's audio to go into Tau and then come out to FL Studio. And as you can see right now, I've got my dry wet at about 50%. I'm going to turn that down a bit, but now this is what we'll hear. And I've just turned down the feedback on the delay tap so that it doesn't go on for so long. Now that I've built myself a basic chain, I want to be able to control some of these parameters more easily. And this is where control surface comes in. So in Harmless, what I want to be able to do is control the frequency cutoff. Because this is an FL native plugin, all I need to do to make this happen is right click on the control and hit activate. Now if I go back to the map, you'll see a red connection has appeared for a parameter. And up in the top of the interface, it also tells me that that's the filter frequency. Now I need to go into control surface and create a new knob using the right click menu. 
And you can create any type of control for this, it doesn't matter. Then just connect the two connections up, and I can now control it with the knob if I switch off edit mode. But what about third party plugins where you can't right click on the knobs or switches? Well this is just as easy as automating a third party plugin anywhere else in FL Studio. All we need to do is tweak the control which we want to automate, then head back to the map, right click on the plugin, go to your inputs, then in this case parameters, and last tweaked is up here, which as you can see is the drive which is what I tweaked. Now if we go into surface, I'll stick on a slider this time I think, and I'm going to attach these two up. So, if I switch off the editing of surface, here's what I've got now. This really wasn't the best control to automate as it's not really designed to be automated on the fly by the sounds of it, and also as you can hear, pushing up the drive adds a lot of noise to the output signal, so I'm going to set that back down for now. Because of the noise levels above about 50% here, I don't really want this control to go all the way up as that will create such a high noise floor that it won't have a great sound. Therefore I only want the knob to control between 0 and 50%. And you can do this using a plugin which FL's had for a long long time, and it's even more useful now in Patcher. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a fruity formula controller, and I'm going to activate my A input, and also activate my outputs. So I'm going to take this control off and stick it on the A input, and then set the output to go to tau dub. Now if we head over to the formula controller, you can see it's got a formula. Right now it's adding up values of three inputs, but all I want to do here is divide A, which is what I've just sent control surfaces knob through to, by two which will mean that if I set the control in control surface to 100%, it will come out of the formula controller at 50%, and obviously if I set it to 1%, it will come out at a half percent. So it scales properly, and it will never go above 50% inside tell. To do this, all I need to do is hit A, divided sign, and 2, and it's that simple. These formulas can be really complicated if you want them to, but it's just simple maths. And for rescaling control information, it really is that simple. So here's what I've got now. So it's at zero there, turn that up all the way, and now it's at halfway. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to get onto the VFX plugins a little bit later as well, but firstly I want to show you something cool about Control Surface. Let's say you don't like these knobs that we've got here, you're trying to build something which is going to be really nice to look at, maybe you want to go and share it on the Loop Talk forum for instance, and you want to be able to give it your own kind of look and feel. And this is something which ImageLine thought about when they were designing Patch's control surface. To do this you need to use the control creator, which is stored under the FL Studio folder, under System, Tools, Control Creator, and then just double click the Control Creator executable. Now this gives you a lot of controls to create your own wheel or sliders, and it's really just worth playing with, I'm not going to do a tutorial on this, as it's such a simple program to work out and use that there's really no point. However, once you've created a control such as this one, all you need to do to use that inside control surface is click save, then starting from the FL Studio 11 folder again, go to plugins, fruity, effects, then control surface, artwork, styles, and then save it inside the relevant folder, in this case it's a knob. So I'll just save over the one I created earlier, and now if we go back to control surface, turn on editing, right click, go to style, and then select your knob. And there we go, really easy and really cool. I've already used the formula controller to add some further control to Patcher, and that's just one of several plugins which are useful inside Patcher. Another being the Fruity Peak or LFO controller which has been useful in previous versions of FL. But with Patcher version 2, ImageLine have also added two VFX plugins for use within Patcher. They're pretty simple to use and are there to help sort out and manipulate incoming MIDI signals. The first one is Color Mapper, and this is used to map note colours from FL's piano roll. The colour indicates the MIDI channel in use, and Colour Mapper allows you to route each individual channel to a different place, which is handy for creating multi timbral instrument patches. For instance, if I add another plugin now to this chain, I'm going to hear both of these at once. Right now, there are MIDI signals coming into both harmless and massive at the same time, and I don't really want that, I'd like to be able to use this as a multi timbral instrument and choose between the two patches. So this is where Colour Mapper comes in. What I'm going to do first, is detach both of these from Harmless and Massive, 
and I'm now going to send the MIDI signal which is coming from FL into Color Mapper out of the voice output 1 from Color Mapper into Harmless and voice output 2 into Massive. So right now these are configured to send MIDI channel 1 out of output 1 and MIDI channel 2 out of output 2. And indeed if I select a MIDI channel 1, that's Harmless, and if I select MIDI channel 2, that's Massive. So that's a really cool thing to know about. What I think is even cooler though is the second VFX plugin, which is the VFX Key Mapper. And what I'll do is I'm going to take the events input out of Color Mapper and I'm going to have it going from FL Studio to Key Mapper and then from Key Mapper to Color Mapper. What Key Mapper does is it takes incoming note signals and routes them to outgoing notes. And basically what this allows me to do is say I don't want C to play the C note, I want C to play the D note. So now if I press the C key, you're going to hear it's the same as the D key which is pretty cool, and I can change this to E. At this basic level, this might appear completely crazy and like there's no use for it. But what if I'm in a live performance, and I want to make sure I don't screw up, but I want to maybe freestyle something out? This can therefore be used to lock myself to a certain key. There are a number of presets already included, so let's lock myself to a blues scale. And you can see now that lots of notes have been remapped to be different notes. And if you were watching the piano roll here, you can see I was just hitting random notes, but it was all in key and sounded quite bluesy because it's a blues scale which I've put in there. You can also use this for instance to play chords with one key though. And beyond this, it's really just worth playing around. The multi-mode is a pretty cool thing to think about. Currently it's set to all, which means that if I put all of these notes on C, if I hit C it will play them all at once. Sounds pretty nasty. If I set it to random though, then it's now going to select a random key. If I set it to cycle up, it's just worth playing with. And on a final note, if you select this blues key for instance, but you don't want it to be in a bluesy C, you can just change the bass key. Maybe I want it in a bluesy F sharp. There we go. And as I said, I think this is probably my favourite addition, as it's just damn cool. Hopefully this tutorial has given you a good insight into Patcher and the power it gives users. It's designed primarily so you can create your own chains while in the creative zone. However, if you want to see what it's really capable of, LoopTalk's very own Ulean has created an amazing supply of plugins using Patcher, which I'll put a link to down below. If nothing else, you can tear them apart and see how he's constructed his effects. In other news, we've just released our new sample pack, Modern Breaks, which includes 2 gigabytes of freshly recorded break samples, and for more information on that, there's a link on screen now and down below. The preview video for this will be up later this month, but for now you can download a sample sample pack on the product page. But that's it for this episode of Production Bytes. thanks a lot for watching, and for more tutorials don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.